Hey guys, it's Danny. Today we are repotting our first seedling, which is threatening to grow out of its pot. Now it's not yet like growing out of its pot, but I did see new roots. We have a whole bunch of new roots and I know for a fact that the next growth this orchid puts out will be outside of the pot. It's also really full in here. It gets dry really, really fast. It's on the verge of getting dehydrated all of the time. It needs a bigger pot. And today I'm gonna actually up pot it. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about that because some of you might know I'm not a fan of up potting, but in this case, there are some other criterias we're taking into account. Right, so we're gonna take care of this little seedling. It's part of the Cattleya seedlings that I got last year. This, as you can see, it's not a seedling anymore. It's a young plant. If you missed that video, you want to learn more about orchid seedlings, if you're a beginner, I'll link you to it down below. We're not going to do an entire update on all the seedlings today, we're just going to do a repot because really, I, I need to get to repotting this. It's a cat layout, it needs to be repotted at the correct time so I don't set it back. Hence why we're also gonna do an op pot, but we're gonna talk about it in a second. Before we start, don't forget to give this video a like if you end up enjoying it and why not subscribe? I post multiple times a week and it's completely free. But if you're feeling a little extra and you can and you wish to further support the channel, do consider becoming a member and getting access to some exclusive videos and behind the scenes. You can also use the affiliate links down below in the description of my videos. You can also check out the merch. We have mugs and a really nice puzzle at the moment. If all else fails, you can use the super thanks option below my videos. Right, I need my tray. I used my tray recently. It's there. I need my tray, I need my gloves, and we'll get to repotting and talking about this orchid. All right, so who is this little seedling? This is Schimberchia Thompsoniana crossed with Cattleya Lodigesi. You guys, I've had the Schimberchia many years ago. It was one of my like first orchid species. It is a very vigorous orchid, so I'm having high hopes. I lost my Schimberchia due to Fusaria many years ago when I moved to Cyprus. Cattleya Lodigesi is the parent of the wonderful Lodi Song Summer Beauty, which I absolutely adore. There are two orchids crossed here that I have quite a crush on. So I'm thinking it's gonna look great. So far though, no signs of flower spikes or sheaths or anything of the sorts. I think this orchid has some growing to do, but it grows pretty fast. The fact that it has that Schimberchia in its parentage makes it more vigorous. Um, not sure if it makes it grow a little bit faster. Lodigesi has a very slow growth, one growth per year. One of those. Even so, it's a Cattleya and I want to repot it at the correct time. In the correct time, just for the sake of our mental sanity, is to repot our kids when you see new roots growing. Because when you repot Cattleyas, there is a high chance the older roots will not make it. Being that it's young, it doesn't really have the robustness and the fallback plants, let's say that other Cattleyas might have, it doesn't have enough pseudobulbs. And it also has tinier pseudobulbs, the ceiling pseudobulbs. So from the get-go, it doesn't have as many structures that, as other Cattleyas, that's one. Second, it might be the type of Cattleya with slow growth, which means bouncing back from setback takes years. Years upon years, I will be an old lady Hopefully, I get to be an old lady until I will see this one bloom. So you know what? We're not gonna do that. We're not gonna damage the roots in any way, shape or form or set it back. And we're gonna pot it. This means that I will remove the circuit from the pot and I'm just pressing a little on the pot. This is a very flimsy, cheap pot. So I don't care if I damage it way too much, but it's also very easy to remove. So. Well, I say it's easy to remove, I don't know. I hope it is. So what I'm gonna do is just press a little bit, just to remove, you know, the roots that are attached. And then, ah, there we go. Just pull up and hey presto. I do not have dead roots. You can see there are some brownie roots here. That's totally fine. Cattleya roots can go brown. They're stiff, they're robust. I see root tips as well. Um, yeah, it looks good. I'm not even gonna bother this. I'm gonna let it be and I'm gonna put it as it is, like a plug, in a bigger pot and I'm just gonna put medium around it. Normally, I don't suggest this for orchids because organic medium breaks down. And when I say break down, I feel like I'm not conveying 
the gravity of the situation. Breaking down means rotting. Organic media rots in time and that's not good for the roots. These roots should be in something fresh and clean. Typically they would grow on the bark of a tree which stays not rotting. It's alive, it's being kept alive, let's say, by the tree. So that's why we need to repot orchids. However, as you can see, I'm using sphagnum moss and the quality of the sphagnum moss that I use is very, very, very good. I've had orchids in the same sphagnum moss for almost four years and the moss doesn't smell bad, doesn't look bad. I'm guessing maybe it's slightly more acidic than it was at the beginning, but not by much. The roots are absolutely fine. They don't get burned, nothing of the sorts. Now this, I repotted it a year ago. Let's, let's see. Oh, July 23, a year ago to the day or to the month. So it's one year old sphagnum moss. It's gonna for sure last me another two years, for sure. So if I can pot this orchid up, not disturb it in any way, shape or form as a seedling. And then, you know, when it's time to repot again, then I will remove all of this medium and stuff. It's okay, it's gonna be an adult and it's gonna be more vigorous with more pseudobulbs, less setback hopefully, then that's fine with me. So that's why I'm choosing to up pot it now because the seedling, it is more fragile than a mature orchid and I know I might set it back a lot if I start to remove the moss which I don't have to because it's good quality moss. And I also, I'm not gonna remove the old growth. So what I'm gonna do is go find a pot. It's probably gonna be a standard 13 centimeter pot. And you'll see it's much bigger than this one, but it's what we need. So give me a second, I'll be right back. I just need to find a pot. I didn't just yet. I'm unprepared. Alrighty, so I just washed a pot. You can see the difference in size. It's quite, a change it's okay this appears to be a very heavy root producer or a vigorous root producer just like the Schomburgia which I know from experience is a robust massive plant and I'm sure some of you will say but this little plug will stay more moist than everything else and to that I say good I'm counting on it <laughs> it's actually not really because I will continue to use sphagnum moss and also some bark. So whatever moisture is in here will go to the outside, to the other moss. It's not that bad. Moss communicates. It tends to even out. That's its tendency. It, it's so absorbent that it just evens out. But at the same time, if the middle stays more moist, that's fine with me. But let's not forget, I live in an oven. And this year, the 44 degrees Celsius started at the beginning of June. Oh. It's not looking much greater now. Now we have 40. <laughs> and in October, guess what? We're probably still gonna be in the 35 zone. So I'm not worried. I'm not worried about water and stuff. Obviously though, you need to keep in mind your environment as well. But if you're already growing orchids in a different potting mix, then the plug will be a different potting mix as well, right? So this will be a judgment call whenever you have ceilings or orchids, you know it's not a good idea to sit back. Um, but practically, I will be sticking to very similar potting mixes and things will just even out. So I'm gonna try to arrange it not in the middle because the growth direction is here and I'm gonna allow it to have more growth space here as much as for two years or so. So I'm gonna be placing the older growth towards the edge of the pot. It is highly unlikely that these older pseudobulbs will sprout new directions of growth here. If they do, they still have space. But what I want to ensure is that this side, the new growth, has space in the pot. Right, so I'm going in with a little bit of bark as well. I'm gonna put a little bark on this side as well. But I will be using a bamboo skewer and just kind of direct it into a thinner layer on this side. If I put too much medium on this side, it's gonna push my racket forward. That's not what we want. So I'm gonna make a little bit of a sandwich of medium, like I always do, bark and moss. Alternatively, I will opt not for full moss because one, I'm trying to be economical with moss and two, because this one is on the verge of not being a seedling. Okay, it's not a seedling anymore. It's a younger orchid. When they're seedlings, orchids tend to require more water and usually you should be more careful with when you water them. You don't want them to stay dry for a long period of time because they don't have that or those older structures to store nutrients and water. So their tolerance for drought is definitely not as big as a mature orchid. 
All right, so I ran out of battery and I just realized I was not in frame with this orchid for the arrangement of the potting mix. So let's just do that now because I already feel the angry comments coming. You guys are ruthless. I'm scared. So you see I have some big air pockets here. What I can do is get the bamboo skewer and actually use this side and just push a little bit the sphagnum moss a little lower. I can actually put more sphagnum moss and just push it lower. And this is because we already have roots and we have that plug, let's say. It's not easy to make sphagnum moss go into the places you want it to go, you know? So we're just gonna use the trusty bamboo skewer, which is one of the most important tools <laughs> that I own. I'm just gonna add a little bit more moss. As you see, I'm using dry moss and it's not ideal. If I dampen it, it's easier to work with, but you know what, I cannot be bothered. I, I just can't and I'd rather have dry moss because wet moss gets cyanobacteria and it starts to degrade. So there we go. All right, so this is the sandwich of uh, potting materials that I like to use. And now for the top, I will be using, again, bark. And I will just fill it all the way up in the back here as well. And I think, yeah, I still have some air pockets. Again, we're gonna go with the bamboo skewer and we're just gonna direct this bark to go where we want it to go. There we go. I don't see what I'm doing. You guys do though. Let me know if it's okay. <laughs> But pretty much that is about it. So once you see this orchid in this pot, is this pot too big for the orchid? Suddenly it's not. Can you believe it came from this pot? Yes. It is always a great idea to take into account the entirety, the entire size of the orchid and its growth pattern. I see that the rhizomes are not incredibly long on this orchid, so that's good. It's not gonna outgrow the pot very fast. So I'm hoping for another two years she can stay here and then it's time to remove all of this medium and place it into brand new medium. Now, you can see I've started with this side closer to the edge, but somehow it migrated a little bit. That's okay, that happens. It's just the medium that I placed here that is just pushing on the pot. It's okay, it's fine. You know, the balance inside is more important. We do still have quite a bit of growth space here at the front, it is okay. And sometimes if you just pull it back like this, the orchid, and you add a little bit more medium here, you know, you can actually create a little bit more space. In the end, it's gonna grow wherever it wants to. End of story. But um, yeah, I think we did a pretty good job. And hey presto, our orchid is repotted. We are going to place another date on the tag. It actually has to do more with slow release fertilizer. Just so I know when I last added, because if I don't repot it next year, I'm just gonna add it on the sides of the pot. And here we are. What I'm gonna do now is make sure that I water this orchid very well. You can see all of the medium was dry, including the plug. I let these guys dry out. They're still cattleyas. I don't let them be dry for too long, but I don't keep them soggy either. Need to be mindful of that. And we're done. I'm gonna clean up the table and come back with our final thoughts. Alrighty, and here we are. The orchid is potted. This is the first repot of the seedlings. And as I was saying in one of my previous videos, whenever you buy seedlings, you don't really know exactly what you're gonna get. The nursery might say it's 36 months away from blooming, but it's actually not. It's like 12. One of the seedlings actually tried to bloom, but the bud blasted. It's okay, it's a young plant, it's the first blooming, it happens. So you never know. And also some seedlings will just be taller and bigger than others because they have a different parentage. Some will be more on the small and the miniature size. This one I predict will be quite tall. It's gonna be a big orchid. So I'm looking forward to it, but there we have it. This is how I think I'm gonna go for most of the seedlings that are growing the pot right now. I'm gonna keep the plug because setting back seedlings, honestly, I feel like it's even worse than setting back mature orchids because they're just so sensitive and they're just so slow. They're very, very slow. So you know what, I'm potting, not my cup of tea, until it, it's fine. <laughs> In this particular case, I'm okay with it and mainly because the sphagnum moss is good quality. But yeah, there we go. I will make a seedlings update pretty soon. Not that soon though, there isn't all that much going on. The seedlings are doing great, but it's been a year already since I got them, so we should make an, a one year mark update, right? 
how about we do that now yeah I'm gonna finish this video today I have a filming day you guys oh my gosh I went through all of my batteries and all of my like microphone batteries as well I don't know how much the microphones will last but I'm gonna film as much as I can I filmed the entire day so I'm gonna do an update now of the ceilings actually I don't know when I'm gonna post it but I will post it soon one year after I purchased them so for now this is about it thank you so much for watching hope you've enjoyed hanging out with me today and um hope you learned something new. I also hope that you have a wonderful day and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!